Like equations, inequalities can be handled with many of the same steps. However, inequalities automatically, by their nature, have more than just a single answer. They include an infinitely large collection of numbers that would work. So we would want to have a shorthand way of providing all of those particular numbers, since we cannot list them. Which means that we would have, in one way, interval notation. In another way, we would have a drawing, or a line drawing. Or a third way, which would be the most direct way, and the one that you're probably most used to, an actual inequality statement, such as x is greater than 10. Now, there has to be a connection between all three of these, and we can use that to our advantage. But mathematically, we've got the interval notation and the rules all appearing here on the screen that provides us with also a little bit more flexibility so that we could use interval notation beyond just giving answers to inequality problems. So you will see this again in the future in other ways than just simply giving an inequality answer. We need to handle a couple of different types of situations here with these rules. You notice that we have to have two different kinds of symbols that are used to either begin or end our answer. A parenthesis or a square bracket. A parenthesis is going to appear beside a number that is not part of our answer. A parenthesis would also be used in the special case of appearing beside an infinity symbol or a negative infinity symbol, which we'll discuss in a moment. The square bracket is going to only show up when I am writing a number that is included as part of my answer. A square bracket will never appear beside the infinity symbol or the negative infinity symbol. Now, as far as those two special symbols are concerned, we would need to use those occasionally because there would be times where we want to represent that the numbers in our answer continue in either a positive direction, so the regular old infinity, or if they continue into the negative direction, where we would use the negative infinity symbol. To give you a little bit better idea of how all these connect together, let's look at some examples which begin with inequality statements. So, in this first inequality statement, the key part is that x is less than 17. If x is less than 17, 17 is the key number that is being provided. I want to color in the numbers that are described. x is less than, smaller than. So smaller than on a number line would be off to the left. And the other piece of information that I need to worry about is whether the 17 would be included in my answer. X is less than 17. So X is only going to be smaller than 17. 17 cannot be included. So I use a parenthesis. Which one? Well, you could say, I want to use the parenthesis that is going to contain the color from bleeding along the number line. So, we need to write our interval version of the statement and the number line drawing that we've created. How far to the left does our, num does our color appear? Well, our color would continue off to the left into the negative numbers forever and ever which means I would need to use a negative infinity symbol to represent that idea. Our yellow highlighter goes only off to the right until we hit the 17. According to our rule, we always use a parenthesis beside the negative infinity symbol, and as we had stated a moment ago, we use a parenthesis beside the 17. Y is greater than or equal to negative 9. So in this particular statement, the important number that's mentioned is the negative 9. Y is greater than negative 9. I want the numbers that are bigger than negative 9. Coloring in those numbers, 
I get to color in everything that is off to the right of negative 9. Do I include the negative 9 as part of my answer or not? Again, the statement says y is greater than or equal to. y can be equal to negative 9. Negative 9, therefore, can be included. So the symbol I would want to use on the negative 9 is going to be a bracket. I would want to use the bracket that stops my color from bleeding across my number line. So I would want to use a bracket that has that appropriate shape. In order to write my interval notation answer, how far to the left does my color appear? My color appears no further to the left than negative 9, where I happen to see a bracket. Always a comma in the middle. How far to the right does my color appear? Well, my color appears to extend off to the right, and there is no end. Off to the right are my positive numbers. So, I would need to use the infinity symbol to give away that idea that the turquoise highlighter never ends as it goes off to the positive direction. And according to my rules, I always use a parenthesis beside that type of special symbol. Z is less than or equal to negative two-thirds. The specific number mentioned is negative two-thirds. I put that on my number line, and then I worry about which way will I color. Z is less than or equal to. Z is smaller than, which means that I would want to color in off to the left. Since Z is allowed to be equal to, that means that I can use a bracket shape and now that I've completed my drawing, again, I go to the questions, how far to the left does my color appear? My color appears to go off to the left without end, so I need to use a negative infinity symbol, and that needs to have a parenthesis in front of it, comma in the middle. How far to the right does my color extend? It goes up to negative two-thirds before it stops, and when it does stop, it has the bracket symbol that shows up. What we can also have to notice here is that there is a pattern that we can take advantage of. The inequality symbol actually points in the direction of where we want to color. As long as the letter appears first, x less than 17, the pointy part is pointing to the left. We have colored in to the left of 17. y is greater than or equal to negative 9. The y comes first. The inequality symbol is pointing towards the right. z is less than or equal to. The z comes first. The inequality symbol points to the right. So we can use that as a way of trying to shorthand our work in creating those drawings. And again, the drawings are going to be very helpful for creating our interval notation until we have gotten much more practiced at using interval notation and can create it without the use of a drawing. We may have to, in fact, though, in some of our exercises, go back and forth, which means they might give us a drawing without any inequality statement, in which case, again, I'm going to be asking myself questions about how far to the left and to the right does my color appear. This will now give me enough freedom in how I display my answers to be able to take care of solving these inequality problems. Now, if you take a moment to read through the steps that appear on the screen, you'll notice that they are very similar to the steps that were written down for solving equations that have only one variable and that didn't have any sort of funky powers. In fact, they're almost identical, with the exception of step four and step five. Step four has an extra note. <coughs> we have a situation to worry about as we're completing our work. If there's any time where I multiply or divide by a negative number, 
I need to make sure that I change the way that my inequality symbol is facing. I would need to switch it around so that it would be facing in the opposite direction. And of course, step five, as we were discussing a moment ago, we might have to give our answer in a particular fashion. An inequality answer might not be good enough, so we may have to give a drawing, or in fact, worst case scenario, we might have to give the interval notation version of the answer. So this example illustrates these steps. I simplify the left-hand side. The right-hand side needs no simplifying. Second step, I combine all of my variable terms together. So my personal preference, subtract the 5x on both sides. Step three, combine the constants together. So I would need to move the 2 by adding 2 on both sides. I would then need to get the x completely and totally by itself by removing the 3. I would divide by 3 in order to accomplish that. And I get the inequality answer, x is greater than negative 3. Now, if that was all that I needed, great. If I needed the number line version of that, x is greater than negative 3. Again, that inequality pointing to the right to tell me to color into the right. Without the or equal to phrase, I do not get to include the negative 3, so I would have to use a parenthesis. And then I can take the number line drawing and transform that into my interval notation answer. So let's look at a couple of examples of this that have not yet been worked out. Let's start with negative 5 parentheses, 3x plus 1, is less than or equal to negative 20. So I want to begin by distributing that negative 5, which means that we would have negative 15x minus 5 less than or equal to negative 20. Now since I only have the x in one spot, I don't need to worry about moving that around. I do need to worry about moving the plain old 5 though. So I'll add 5 on both sides. And that will give me negative 15x is less than or equal to negative 15. In order to get the x by itself, I would need to divide by a negative 15. Well, here's where that note, which is still appearing at the top of the screen, becomes very important. When I take the left and right hand sides and divide by a negative 15, I need to remember that note, which says when multiplying or dividing by a negative number, I need to switch the direction of my inequality symbol. So now my inequality symbol is going to have to face the other way. If I do not do so, I am not going to have the correct answer, which would read x is greater than or equal to 1, which is wonderful if that is the option that I'm allowed to use. However, if I need to create the interval notation or the number line version of that answer, then I'm not done yet. So let's start with the number line version, where a 1 plays the important role. My inequality symbol is telling me that I need to color in to the right of the 1. And the or equal to part of this means that I can use a bracket on top of that one. In order to give me the interval notation answer, bracket, one, comma, infinity, parenthesis. For a little bit of contrast, the other example here that we have, following those same sorts of steps, would be to begin with adding three on both sides dividing by 5 on both sides. Since that is a positive 5, I do not need to worry about changing the direction of my inequality symbol. So that stays the same, less than or equal to. Specifically, x is less than or equal to 3. If I need to create a number line version of that answer or the interval notation version of that answer, my inequality symbol is telling me that I need to color in off to the left. The inequality symbol itself has the or equal to, 
which means that I can put a bracket where the three is, and that would translate to the inequality or the interval notation answer parentheses negative infinity comma three bracket. 